It's the year 3033, and the tale begins in the Tower of Burning Flame, where three warriors are fighting the extremely exotic beast Phoenix and killing it. Xiaoming is happy that the guardian of the Tower of Burning Flame, the extremely exotic beast Phoenix, has finally died. Suddenly, his friends stab him from behind, and when Xiao shockedly asks why they do this because they fought so many wars together for so many years, the girl replies the more the people, the lesser the share will be. The guy says Xiao is too strong, so only when they kill him can they enjoy power peacefully. They push Xiao down, making him fall on the phoenix, and they attack together to kill Xiao, but suddenly Xiao gets up and starts the process of self-destruction. Xiao tells Lai Wang and Long Huan that one day, he'll make them pay for what they did to him. Suddenly, the phoenix burns itself, and he also dies with it. After that, a system detected a change in the trajectory of the character's fate, and it started loading. 300 years later, in the Kong High City Martial Art Academy, a lady is telling the students that 400 years ago, nine black towers fell from the sky. Beasts invaded humans, humans were weak, so they fell into the crisis of extinction. The lady says martial artists were luckily born, countless experts were born, and they suppressed the beasts so that humanity could survive until today. Suddenly, the lady tells his students that she'll show them a human enemy, and suddenly, she removes a cover from a cage in which there is a civilian rank beast hyena is captured. The students are terrified to see the beast, and they think it's ugly, but the teacher says they have learned common knowledge on novice beast beginner knowledge. When the teacher asks what is the weak point of the beast, the students are confused because there are 1,000 types of these beasts, so they wonder who can remember it. Suddenly, the students hear someone snoring behind them, so when they look behind, they see Xiaoming sleeping while leaning against a tree. The teacher yells how dare Xiaoming sleep in her class and asks if he is tired of living. Suddenly, Xiaoming wakes up and yells Lai Wang and Long Huan's name, but he gets shocked to see the students around him. Xiaoming wonders where he is, but suddenly, he remembers he died in the self-destruct of the phoenix. Xiaoming starts getting his memories back, and he understands that he is reborn in a body after 300 years, so he says he never thought God would give him another chance. Xia is happy to think he is not dead because he can take revenge on Lai Wang and Long Huan. Simultaneously, the teacher furiously kicks Xiaoming while asking what revenge he is talking about and says he reads too many novels. The students know that teacher Liu Haisi's violet temper is known to the whole school. They say that Xiaoming, a waste, dared to sleep in her class and deserved to be beaten. The students think Xiaoming is giving up on himself and cannot be a martial artist with such a low chi point, so they ask what the point of him knowing about beasts is. The students make fun of the fact that such waste should be expelled from the academy, and they cannot understand why Xiaoming still has the face to attend the class. Suddenly, Xiaoming remembers that according to the memory of the original owner, today is the knowledge class on alien beasts, and he is just an ordinary student of the martial arts academy. Xiao once killed an imperial beast, but now he has to learn about the lowest level of the beasts. Meanwhile, Qin Ying, the class leader of class 3, tells the teacher that Xiaoming's family conditions are not very good, and the reason why he sleeps in the class is because he often has to work after school. Suddenly, another student, Qi Kang, asks Qin why she has to speak up for this trash, Xiao Ming. Qi says if Xiao fails the midterm test a month later, he'll be expelled from the academy. Meanwhile, Liu tells Xiao that as long as he is not expelled from the academy, he'll be her student. Liu asks Xiao what hyena's weakness is and says if he cannot answer it, then he is going to copy introduction to Elemental's alien beasts for her ten times. The students mock him, saying that Zio probably doesn't know which page of the book Hyena is on, so how could he know his weakness? The students know that Beginner's Introduction to Beasts is such a thick book that it can kill people, and coping with it ten times is too much, so they believe Zio is going to be miserable. When Kin asks Liu if ten times is not too much, Liu asks if Kin is teaching her how to do things. Meanwhile, Qi wonders why Qin Ying always speaks for Zio Ming. Suddenly, Zio says it's just the weakness of hyena beasts, and he already knows it well. When he was a novice in martial arts, he killed 18 herds of hyenas in order to sharpen his skills. Zio can point out the weakness of this beast with his eyes closed, but the students laugh because they think he is bragging. Meanwhile, Liu says since Zio is so confident, then he should tell, but if the answer is wrong, he'll be punished. 
Suddenly, when Zayo says as far as he knows, hyenas have four weaknesses, Liu gets shocked. But the students laugh because they think hyenas only have three weaknesses, and they wonder how there can be a fourth one. Meanwhile, Kin whispers to Zayo that there are only three weaknesses of hyenas marked on the textbook, but Zayo says their textbook must have been written wrong. After hearing this, Kui tells Zayo to stop being a sensationalist because it's clearly written in the textbook that hyena's weak points are only throat, belly, and eyes. Kui calls Zayo trash, which often fails, and says that Zayo dares to question the teaching materials. Kui complains to Liu that Zayo not only sleeps in class but still dares question the teaching materials and suggests letting Zayo reflect at home as punishment. However, Zayo replies that Liu has not said anything, asks Kui who he thinks he is, and calls him a pig with scallions in his nose, acting like an elephant. This makes Kui mad, and when Liu says it's enough, Kui asks Zayo if he heard that teacher Liu told him to shut up, but Liu furiously tells Kui that she is telling him to shut up. Liu says Zayo is saying that Hyena has four weak points, so when she asks what the fourth point is, she knows that most martial artists don't even know the fourth weak point of Hyena. Suddenly, when Zayo is about to reply to the fourth weak point, he notices something is wrong with the Hyena present there in the cage. In a split second, the Hyena breaks the cage, which shocks Liu. Suddenly, the Hyena jumps out of the cage, which scares the students, and they run to save their lives. As Hyena rushes towards Kiwi, he immediately hides behind Kin and starts saying with fear that he doesn't want to die. The Hyena is about to attack Kin, and Liu screams Kui's name with fear, but suddenly, Xiaoming protects Kin and attacks the Hyena with the tip of his fingers between its eyebrows. The Hyena dies on the spot, and Xiao answers that the fourth weak point of the Hyena is its eyebrows. Xiao asks Kin if she is alright, to which she replies she is fine, and she thanks Xiao for saving her life. Kin thinks Zayo Ming gives an unexpected sense of safety. Meanwhile, Zayo, looking at the hyena's dead body, thinks that it is one of the weakest civilian rank beasts, and there is no way it is strong enough to destroy the steel cage. While Zayo thinks this matter feels a bit strange, suddenly, a light from hyena's body enters Zayo's, which startles him. Meanwhile, he gets a notification that he has killed one hyena and obtained one Kai blood. Zayo Ming realizes that by killing beats, he can increase his Kai blood, and he is glad because it seems the system is made just for him. The students are shocked that Hyena is dead, and it's Zayo who killed it instantly with one hit. Liu checks Hyena's dead body and thinks just a mere finger easily crushed Hyena's skull, and such accurate power is used, which even she cannot do. Liu thinks Zayo surely hides his abilities well and when the students ask Liu if Hyena is really dead, she replies that it's dead, and there is no need to be scared anymore. Liu tells the students that, just like Zayo said, Hyena's fourth weak point is its eyebrows, but this content belongs to a high-rank lesson that they haven't learned yet. Liu praises Zayo for doing well this time, and says she'll report this matter to give him bonus points. Zayo thanks Liu, but the kids are shocked that Liu not only praises Zayo, but also gives him bonus points. Meanwhile, a student says it's nothing much because he thinks Zayo got lucky and says he doesn't know from where Zayo heard about Hyena's weak point, but if it was him, he could do it as well. The other students tell this student to stop boasting because even Kiwi King got scared and hid behind Kin. Suddenly, the girls say that Kiwi is chasing after Kin, but know it'll be hard for him because this type of cowardly man can't be relied on and they think Zayo Ming is stronger. Meanwhile, Kui is furious and embarrassed, so he thinks he must find a way to gain back face. Otherwise, his image in the heart of Qin Ying will collapse. Suddenly, he asks everyone who says that he is scared, and says he is just finding a suitable angle to kill it. Kui says his house raised a few of these beasts to keep guard, so he asks why he would be scared. Kui says Zayo is trash with only 10 Kai blood, so if he can kill Hyena, then Kui says he can also do it because his Kai blood is 80. Kiwi steps on Hyena's body and says killing it is something easy, but the other students know he is boasting because from what he did earlier, they cannot believe his words. Meanwhile, the female students say that boasting is not against the law, so they should let him say whatever he wants. Kiwi gets mad that they don't believe him, so he yells he'll prove them, and while saying it's mere hyena only, why he would be scared, he puts his head inside the dead hyena's mouth. Everyone says what Kiwi is doing is disgusting and Liu also tells Kiwi to stop fooling around, but he replies that he is proving he is not scared of Hyena. 
When Kiwi asks how trash like Zio Ming can be compared to him, Zio thinks this kid keeps ridiculing him, so he needs to teach him a lesson. Suddenly, Zio throws a stone at the hyena, which makes the hyena move slightly, and it tightens its grip, which causes Kiwi to start screaming for help because the hyena is not completely dead. However, everyone thinks this serves Kiwi right, Kiwi pisses his pants, but he manages to take out his head. Liwi furiously says the hyena is dead and tells Kiwi to go take a shower and change his pants. Meanwhile, the other students laugh that Kiwi peed his pants because he got scared and they got to see something nice. The students make fun of him because it's the first time such things have happened in their martial arts university. Meanwhile, Zio hopes Kiwi doesn't have nightmares every night because of this incident. After some while, when classes end, some students decide to go to the Hero Plaza, where a new maid cafe opens. Simultaneously, Kiwi arrives with flowers to recover his image in front of Kin and presents it to her. Kiwi apologizes to her for Hyena's matter. Kiwi says he heard Hero Plaza has a new dessert store, so he offers to treat Kin to a meal there as a redemption. Kin accepts the apology, but she tells him to forget about the flower and the dessert. In the meantime, Zio passes by them, so Kin immediately says she has things to do and runs after Zio. Kin thanks Zio for the incident earlier and asks if he is free later because she heard Hero Plaza has a new dessert store, so she'll treat him to dessert as thanks. When Zio says he has things to do, she asks when he'll be free, to which he replies he'll be free tomorrow. Meanwhile, Kiwi is furious to see them together and thinks Zio embarrassed him earlier, and now Zio has snatched the woman he has eyes on, so he decides he won't let him off. After some time, Zio goes to the Hero Plaza, where people have gathered around a statue. Zio hears someone saying that 300 years ago, King Lai and Lord Tornado led martial artists and killed the Nine Feather Firebird. The man tells his kid that those heroes destroyed the Black Tower, Tower of Flame. The man says King Lai and Lord Tornado are humanity's heroes, and if it were not for them, humans might have become extinct long ago. The man says it's a pity recently that, these few years, King Lai and Lord Tornado have been cultivating in Saint City, so they rarely get to see them. Meanwhile, Zio thinks it's laughable that such people who betrayed their teammates and robbed others of credit can also become humanity's heroes. Suddenly Yob, with a fierce expression, says one day he'll tear off the face mask these guys have, and everyone will witness their true colors. Simultaneously, Kiwi is following Zio with his men and tells them to attack Zio in an alley. A while later, when Zio enters an alley, he thinks that even though he has a system, he is in the inner part of the city, so wanting to kill the beasts is hard. Suddenly, Kiwi's men stopped Zio in the alley, and they said they had heard Zio was arrogant. These guys have two hyena beasts with them, and one of them asks how dare Zio provoke their young master Kiwi. When Zio asks who they are, suddenly Kiwi also appears there with two more goons and asks if Zio is not going to eat dessert with Kin, so he asks why Zio is alone. Zio asks if Kiwi has come to cause trouble again, while thinking that he can easily kill two hyenas and a few trash in one minute. Kiwi yells that if it wasn't for Zio, he wouldn't get embarrassed, so he says if he doesn't cripple Zio, his hatred won't go away. Zio asks if Kiwi thinks he can waste him with these few crooks he found, but one of those guys asks how dare a punk with only 10 points of Kai blood be so crazy. Suddenly, all the crooks immediately attack Zio while saying it's his fault for offending the wrong people. Kiwi orders his men to break Zio's limbs and says he'll make Zio into a loser today. Suddenly, Chow beat down all the attackers with a single hit, which shocked Kiwi and the guy who was holding hyenas. Zio tells Kiwi that he cannot beat him with these crooks, but Kiwi replies Zio is too arrogant, and it's not over yet. Suddenly, Kiwi tells his crook to let hyena beasts go quickly and says if anything happens, he'll take the blame. The guy, while releasing the hyena beast's chains, says he heard Zio can kill the hyena beast with bare hands, so he says he wants to see if Zio is really capable of that. The guy leaves the hyenas at Zio, and Kiwi says these two hyena beasts are not the same as the trash in the classroom because these are professionally trained beasts. Kiwi tells Zio to get on his knees and beg for mercy right now. Otherwise, he shouldn't blame Kiwi if he gets bitten to pieces. However, Zio, with an intimidating look, says all hyena beasts are no different to him, and suddenly, he kills those beasts by hitting them between their eyebrows. Kiwi is shocked to see that Zio killed them with a single move, and the hyena's owner also cannot believe this. 
The guy is sure Zio is not a martial artist, and he wonders how Zio could have killed the two fierce hyena beasts under him in an instant. Zio is happy to receive two more Kai and blood points. Simultaneously, Kiwi decides to slip away quickly because he has realized that Zio is strong, but suddenly Zio stops him by asking if Kiwi has exhausted his tricks. When Zio says now it's Kiwi's turn, Kiwi requests Zio to wait, but Zio kicks him between his legs, making him scream in pain. Meanwhile, the hyena's owner is terrified to see this, and Zio says he heard they are called the hyena's gang. Zio knows he is too weak to go out of the city to kill the monsters, and he is worried he will not be able to find a monster to kill. But they come to his door, so Zio says there must be a lot of hyenas in their clan. The hyena's owner tells Zio that their hyena is the largest gang in the west of the city. The guy says there are hundreds of hyenas in their gang, so if Zio dares to touch him, it'll be bad. But before he completes his sentence, Zio slaps that guy and tells the guy to take him to his city. Zio warns the guy that if he tries to play the tricks, he'll skin him alive, so the guy agrees to take him there. After some time, that guy takes Zio to the place where their hyena gang is based, and Zio tells that guy to go now. When the guy shockingly asks what Zio wants, Zio tells that guy to go have a chat with his boss and ask for a hyena killing job. Meanwhile, some people are betting on the hyenas fighting, while the boss of that place asks his secretary where the third guy with his two hyenas is. The secretary tells his boss that the young master of the Chu family is to teach a kid who he heard is a loser from the martial academy, Zio Ming. The secretary tells the boss that the third brother took someone to support the field, but the boss is furious that to deal with one piece of trash, they need to bring two hyenas and says the third is getting worse and worse. Suddenly, Zio kicks open the door, which startles everyone, and they wonder what is going on. When the boss asks who it is, Zio says his name is Zio Ming and asks who the boss of the hyena gang is. The boss thinks the name Zio Ming seems familiar, and the secretary tells the boss that this Zio is the person that the third brother brought people to teach a lesson. The boss asks Zio why he is alone and where the third brother who went to capture him is. Zio understands this person is the leader of the gang, so he tells the boss that he might have mistaken something and says he cannot be captured. Zio says he has come there on his own to kill the hyenas and remembers that private animal fighting is forbidden in the city. Zio says he'll help them kill all the hyenas there, and then they'll have no risk of getting captured, but the guys there laugh at him. The guys there say this place is the hyena gang's territory, so they ask how dare Zio come there and capture people. They ask where he got the courage to come there and dare to say he can kill all the hyena beasts. The boss orders his men to cripple Zio's legs and throw him out, so they gladly agree to attack. Those guys say Zio must be tired of living because he dares to act arrogant in their territory, and they say this is not the place where the weakling should come. While those guys start beating Zio, the boss asks where this guy came from to waste his time. Suddenly, the boss sees his men falling on the ground, and as he looks back towards Zio, Zio says he came there to solve the problem, but if they don't cooperate with him, then they should not blame him for that. Simultaneously, the other guys watching this wonder if they are seeing things because Zio beats so many of them with one move. Seeing Zio's uniform, they realize he is a student, but they cannot understand why he is so strong. Suddenly, the boss says he never thought Zio would be so strong, so he says since Zio wants to kill all the hyenas, then he can do all the labor. The boss orders his men to open the cages and free all the hyenas, so as the guy there does this, the hyenas immediately move towards Zio. The guys there chant at the hyenas to bite Zio, and Zio likes the situation, but he thinks two hyenas are not enough to kill. Suddenly, Zio beats down both the hyenas with a single kick, which shocks everyone there, and they think their boss, KD, won't let Zio off easily because two hyenas died just like this. When the secretary asks Cade what they should do, Cade orders him to let out all the hyenas because he wants to see how many Zio can kill. When the guys there let out all the hyenas, Zio says it's interesting, and one minute later, Zio is beating those hyenas with a baseball bat. Zio continues beating the hyenas, and half an hour later, when some hyenas try to run away, Zio asks where they are going and tells them to stop. While Kate is shocked at how this is possible, Zio kills the remaining hyenas and absorbs their Kai blood. Zio thinks this wave of blood points is really cool, but the guys there are shocked that Zio killed so many hyenas by himself, and they wonder if he is really an ordinary student. 
Zio asks if this is the end of it because he is just starting to warm up, so he tells the gang boss to let more hyenas out. Cade furiously replies that Zio is getting ahead of himself and says that even if there are no hyenas or beasts, his people can take Zio down. Cade orders his men to grab their weapons and attack Zio, but as he looks back, he sees his men running away with fear. The boys there run away, saying Zio is not a human, and they can't beat a hyena beast, so how can they beat Zio? When they leave the boss on his own, he yells how dare they betray him like this. Suddenly, when Zio advises the boss to take care of himself, the boss is terrified and asks what the hell Zio wants. Zio replies that he simply wants to know from where the boss gets these hyenas and if there are any other beasts out there. Zio knows if they can get hyena beasts, they can naturally get other strange beasts too. So he thinks if he finds this channel, his strength will be able to improve rapidly. The boss yells at Zio not to even think about this because this is the foundation of their hyena gang and says even if Zio kills him, he can't tell him. After asking if it is like this, Zio starts beating Cade. After getting beaten for a while, Cade tells Zio that hyena was brought from the Eclipse Arena in the south of the city, and it is said that there are three other alien beasts in it. Cade says hyenas and the other beasts don't look at the alien beasts at all, so that's why he brought hyenas, they are cheaper for him. Zio remembers that in their previous life, he often went to the arena to hone his martial arts skills. Zio remembers correctly that he still holds the record for the highest winning streak in all arenas. Zio asks Cade when the arena will open and who the boss is, to which Cade replies the arena will open once this week, but as for the owner of the arena, he doesn't know who it is and he just heard it's a big shot. Zio says it's good and tells Cade to take him to the arena on the weekend, but when Cade shockingly asks if Zio wants to go there, Zio asks if Cade doesn't want to take him there. Cade tells Zio that Eclipse Arena is a membership system, but Zio asks if Cade has a bruise on his chest that has been there for over a decade. When Zio says it must have been caused by the Iceborne Hawk's breath, Cade gets shocked and asks how Zio knows this. Zio replies that not only does he know, but he can also heal that dark wound. He thinks this Cade is the local snake in Konghai City, and it'll be much more convenient for him to have Cade do things for him. Zio tells Cade to go and prepare 3 grams of wood seed ash, 0.5 grams of sand crystals, and 6 grams of purple spore mushroom liquid and find him a clean room. Cade confusedly says these things are raw materials that only a potion master would use. Cade knows potion masters are rarer than martial artists and each one is the guest of honor of all the major powers. A potion master can make a very powerful potion, for even an ordinary person can have the power of a martial artist after taking a potion. Cade thinks if this kid is a potion master, he'll have been inducted into the pharmacist guild long ago, but he cannot understand how Zio is still in school. Suddenly, when Zio says he'll only give Cade one minute to bring the things, Cade instantly rushes to get them ready. Cade thinks if this kid is a potion master, he might be in luck. So after a while, he brings all the required materials. Zio checks the material and thinks since he stood at the top of the warriors in his previous life, he has rarely refined medicines, so he hopes his skills are not rusty. Suddenly, Zio starts preparing the potion using the lightning chain molecular reaction formula, and Cade gets shocked because this is something only a potion master can understand. Cade is glad that he actually met a potion master and thinks he is going to be rich. Meanwhile, Zio completes the potion-making process, and Cade, seeing the blue substance in Zio's hand, asks if this is the potion that is going to cure his internal wounds. Zio replies that he is right, and says it's been a long time since he has made a potion, so he says they should use this grade 3 potion as practice. Cade is shocked to hear it's a grade 3 potion because a grade 3 potion on the market costs at least 1,000 gold coins. Suddenly, Zio tells Cade to open his mouth and makes him drink the potion, which instantly heals Cade's wounds, and he is happy to see this. Cade kneels in front of Zio and says he cannot repay for his kindness. Cade says in the future, he'll do whatever Zio asks him to do, and even if it is going up to the mountain of knives and down the pan of oil, he'll never frown. Zio says it's enough, and it's not Cade's turn to go up the mountain of knives and down the pan of oil. Zio tells Cade to remember to let him enter the Eclipse Arena on the weekend, to which Cade replies it's not a problem. When Zio gets going, Cade asks where he is going and says he'll drive him. On the other hand, a girl named Zioyu is running a food stall in the market area when an old uncle asks her if her brother hasn't come back because school is over. 
Zaiyu replies that she doesn't know and that her brother may be busy with his studies. Meanwhile, her customer says he heard that Xiaoming's Kai blood is only 10 points, so he can't become a warrior at all. The customer yells at Xiaoyu that it's all in vain for her to work so hard every day to sell the skewers for him to go to the martial arts academy, so he suggests she call her brother back to help her so as to save her so much tiredness. Xiaoyu furiously snatches the skewers from the customer and asks why he talks so much nonsense. The customer immediately says he is just kidding, but suddenly, a guy pushes the customer away and tells Xiaoyu that it's time to pay her monthly booth fee. Xiaoyu shockingly asks if she has to pay the booth fee again and says she paid it at the beginning of the month. The guy tells Xiaoyu that normally, the stall fee is paid three times a month and before, it was a special discount given to her because her brother had hopes of becoming a martial artist, but now her brother doesn't live up to the expectations. Zaioyu says she doesn't have money and asks if that guy can wait for a few days, to which the guy replies he can't because the landlord's family doesn't have surplus food these days. Suddenly, the guy says if she has no money, she can use her body to pay, but the older man who knows Zaioyu says he can lend her some money. The guy kicks the old man away, saying that he should mind his own business. The other people in the market are furious to see that those goons from the Urgu gang are picking on people again, and they wonder if anyone can't take care of those guys. One of the bystanders says the Urgu gang is the biggest hyena gang in the west of the city, so he asks who among them ordinary people can provoke this gang. Urgu gang member warns Zaioyu to follow him obediently because if she follows him, she'll be able to enjoy delicious food and ask if this is not better than selling skewers. Zaioyu furiously moves away from that guy, saying she'll not follow him, but the guy tries to touch her while saying it's not up to her. As the guy is about to touch her, suddenly, a skewer stabs into his hand, making him scream in pain. When Zaioyu looks back, she sees Zayo standing there, and he says it looks like he just got back in time. Meanwhile, the guy screaming in pain tells his men to take the stick out of his hand, but they, while pulling the stick, say it's too deep, so they tell him to bear with them while they pull it out. Simultaneously, the people shockingly discuss if Zio Ming threw that stick, and they wonder how he suddenly became so strong. Zio Yu is shocked to see her brother there, but Zio tells her there is no need to thank him. Zio says that the guy dared to bully her, and as her brother, he has to teach that guy a lesson. Zaioyu, with joy, starts pulling her brother's cheeks and asks how he has become so much stronger all of a sudden. Zaioyu asks if he has become a warrior and says it's not for nothing that she sold skewers for him to go to school. Zaioyu is glad that Zio finally made it through and tells Zio to let her see what is the difference between warriors and ordinary people. Suddenly, Zio tells her not to get too excited because he is not a warrior yet, which makes her sad. Meanwhile, the Urgu gang member gets up and asks how dare Zio behave so arrogantly if he is not a warrior yet. The guy says if he doesn't teach Zio a lesson today, Zio won't know how cruel the outside world is. Zioyu feels it's not good, so she tells Zio to run away because he is not a martial artist and not their opponent. The guy says he can't let Zio run and orders his men to stop Zio for him, so they immediately surround Zio from different sides. Simultaneously, their big brother takes out a knife and says he'll poke a few holes into Zio's body and see if Zio can still dare to get up. Suddenly, Zioyu comes in front of her brother and says she'll go with that guy, but he won't do anything for her brother. The guy replies it's too late but tells her not to worry because he'll not kill her brother quickly. The guy says he'll let Zio watch him play with his sister and then he'll let her watch him beat Zio with her own eye. As that guy says this Zio with a fierce punch hits that guy down and furiously asks that guy how dare he hit on her sister. Zio asks that guy if he is looking for death. But Zio Yu shockingly asks if Zio doesn't say that he is not a martial artist. Zio says he is not a martial artist, but he is a little closer and apologizes that she made Zio Yu bear too much before, so he says he'll now protect her. Suddenly, the Urgu guy asks how dare Zio hit his face and orders his men to kill Zio, so they ask how Zio would like to die. Zio calls them clowns and immediately knocks them out with single hits, which shocks their big brother. Zio kills them with instant hits. Zio tells the Urgu guy that it is his turn next, but that guy says he is protected by the biggest hyena gang in the west of the city. So if Zio dares to harm him, Kate of the hyena gang will never let him go. 
Zioyu tells Zio that they must not offend the hyena gang, and the people there also tell Zio to let it go because the hyena gang is a tyrant in the western part of the city, and they cannot be provoked by people like them. A woman there says she heard there are nearly a hundred hyenas in the hyena gang, even a few warriors, and everyone would take a detour at the sight of it. The people tell Zio not to be impulsive, but when Zio asks if that guy's boss is Cade, the Urgu guy thinks Zio is regretting it now, so he says it's too late. Suddenly, Cade arrives there and tells his master Zio that he has brought all the snacks and drinks that are typical of that street. When Cade asks if something is missing and says he'll buy it again, Urgu guy gets shocked to see his boss and asks what is going on. Everyone is shocked to see Cade, but they can't understand why Cade's attitude towards Zio looks flattering. Suddenly, when Cade asks Zio what he wants to do in that place, Zio tells Cade that there is a blonde man who bullied his sister, so he is prepared to destroy him. Cade, furiously walking towards the Urgu guy, says if anyone dares to bully his master Zio's sister, he'll make sure to beat that person up. Cade tells Zio not to worry because he'll make this guy regret coming to this world, but Zio says this deflated calf says he can do whatever he wants because Cade protects him. Cade gets nervous and requests Zio to let him explain, but that guy tells Cade that he is Chen Er Gao from the Two Dogs Gang. Suddenly, Chen says last year, he gifted Cade a mink coat and begs Cade to forgive him for the years he helped Cade manage Liu Zing Street. Chen begs Cade to give him another chance in the future, and he'll double the amount of money he gives him. Chen never thought Zio had a relationship with Cade, so he thinks he has to forgive what Zio did to him. Chen thinks he'll find a way later to make up for his loss from the people in Liu Zing Street. On the other hand, the people are worried to hear Chen saying that he'll give double the money to Cade because they worry the cost of their stalls will increase as well. The people are worried because life is hard, so they wonder what will happen if the stall fee increases. The people think of asking Zio for help because he seems close to Cade, but they wonder if money is more important than relationships. They think it's good Zio Ming can take care of himself. Meanwhile, when Chen asks what Cade thinks, Cade slaps him and asks if he is trying to kill him by offering double the money. Cade says Zio is his benefactor, so if Chen dares to anger him, he'll cripple him and says from now on, Chen is not related to the hyena gang. Chen gives up and requests Cade not to hit him, so Cade goes to the people and apologizes to them for not teaching his underlings properly. Cade, as an apology, announces that there'll be no more stall fees for Liu Zing Street. People are surprised but happy that they can save money now, and they say it was impossible for Cade to suddenly show kindness. He should have done it because of Zio Ming's face. The people think they underestimated Zio Ming, but now they chant that Zio Ming is amazing. Zio Yu never thought her big brother would be so strong. Meanwhile, Cade asks Zio if he is satisfied with what he did. Zio replies it's not bad and says it's getting late, so he is going home first. Zio tells Cade to take him to the Eclipse Arena on the weekend, to which Cade agrees and thinks he must be recognized by Master Zio. On the other hand, Qin Ying's father tells her that he heard she had her beast class at school, so he asks how it was and if he got scared. Qin Ying replies to her father, Qin Zheng, that she doesn't get scared and he underestimates her too much. Qin Ying does not want to tell her father about the hyena beast's accidental escape because he'll lecture her again. Ying says there are only the lowest level alien beasts in the class, but she says the alien beasts she saw when Zheng took her to the Star Eclipse Arena before are vicious. Zheng says if this is so, then Qin Ying is really good, and Ying says it's getting late, so she has to go to the pharmacist's guild to study. As she leaves, Zheng calls his right hand Qin Yi, who immediately appears there wearing a cape like a ghost. When Zheng asks if he finds out the reason for the hyena beast's rampage, he replies to his majesty that after investigation, it was found that someone had injected the hyena beast in the class with a berserk potion in advance. Zheng asks Yi who did this, to which Yi replies they are still investigating, and that the person who did it left a trail on purpose. Yi thinks they might be trying to send a threatening signal to Zheng, which infuriates Zheng, and he orders Yi to find them as soon as possible. Zheng says whoever is behind this, if he dares to make a move against his daughter, he'll make him pay for it. Suddenly, Yi disappears into the air after receiving the orders, and Zheng wonders if this is what the Star Eclipse Arena is doing. The next day, in Star Eclipse Arena, a guy is fighting against a one-horned ghost tiger, and a lot of people are sitting in the audience. Zio and Cade are also present there, and Zio is surprised to see so many people there. 
Cade says it's the weekend, so there are more people, and those who come there are not ordinary people. Meanwhile, Zio thinks 300 years ago, alien beasts were the life and death enemies of human beings. People would be destroyed when they saw those beasts, but now they regard them as playthings, and Zio can't understand if it's a fall or progress. Suddenly, the ghost tiger attacks that guy and slams him into the wall, which causes the man to die, and Cade gets furious because he lost a hundred silver coins again. Zio asks Cade if there are any restrictions on who can become a gladiator. Cade answers that is not the case and anyone who wants to can go straight to the ring. Zio says it's good, so he'll go down and play. He thinks after he kills that one-horned ghost tiger, his kai and blood points will definitely break a hundred. Suddenly, Zio tells Cade to buy 10,000 silver coins and bet on him to win, but Cade shockingly asks what he is saying. Suddenly, Zio jumps in the ring, which terrifies Cade, and he asks how Zio can go down and fight with a beast when Zio is a respected pharmacist. Meanwhile, in the VIP box, Ying is also sad because she lost a thousand silver coins, but Zheng tells her it's not a big matter. Zheng gives her a hundred gold coins equal to ten thousand silver coins and tells her that she can pay with it as she likes. Ying thanks her father, but Zheng thinks he originally planned to come to the Star Eclipse Arena to try it out today. But he didn't expect Ying to follow him, so he thinks he has to wait until next time. Suddenly, Zheng says he heard Ying get very close to a boy named Zhao Ming in her class, which startled her, so she hesitantly replied that Zhao had helped her before. Zheng says he is grateful for Zhao's help, but he heard Zhao only has 10 Kai blood points, so it should be hard for him to become a martial artist. Meanwhile, Zheng thinks the more Ying is suppressed, the more rebellious she'll become. Zheng tells Zhao that their family has opened a new factory in the south of the city and they can let Zio work there as a team leader to ensure that he'll have enough to eat for the rest of his life. Zheng tells her daughter that in the world of weak and strong if a person is not a martial artist, he is doomed to fail in life. Zheng says some people can only become memories and tells Ying that he is doing this for her own good. Suddenly, the audience starts discussing that the one-horned ghost tiger has been overthrown, and they are shocked to see the one who did this is a student. Zio absorbs the ghost tiger's Kai blood which causes his blood points to increase to 109, and Zio is glad because he is a warrior now. Meanwhile Ying, while pointing towards Zio, tells her father to look at Zio Ming, and her father is shocked to hear that Zio has defeated the horned ghost tiger. Ying tells her dad that ghost tiger is a warrior level beast, and if Zio Ming can defeat it, it means Zio already has the strength of a warrior. Zheng says it seems so, but the one horned tiger is a warrior level, one star beast, which is comparable to the strength of most junior human martial artists. In addition, it had fought several times in a row, so Zheng says it probably didn't have enough strength, so Zio Ming's cunning took advantage of it. When Ying asks why her father is saying that about Zio Ming, he tells her to think about it. Not long ago, Zio only had 10 blood points. Zheng asks Ying how Zio can become a warrior and defeat a level 1 star beast so quickly. Zheng believes there must be something strange because Zio is not that strong, but Ying thinks her classmate Zio is very powerful. Meanwhile, the arena staff drags the dead beast, and Zio confidently asks if there are no more powerful beasts because he hasn't had a good fight yet. On the other hand, a secretary tells Lord Theon of the arena that there is a newcomer who just killed a one-horned ghost tiger, and now he wants to continue the fight. Suddenly, when Theon asks what happened to the last person who messed up in the arena, the secretary replies that the guy was torn into pieces by beasts. Theon tells her secretary to go and make arrangements because it's been a long time since he smelled blood. Meanwhile, Cade praises Zio, saying he is too good because he killed the tiger with just three punches and two kicks. Suddenly, Zio asks Cade to give him the thing he told him, but Cade can't understand what Zio is asking. Zio says he is talking about the money that he told Cafe to bet on his win, but Cade screams with devastation because he was so worried about Zio that he forgot to bet on him. Zia furiously asks what Cade just said, to which Cade replies that Zio should not worry because he is going to bet right now. Cade immediately runs to bet 20,000 silver coins and says Zio is so strong, he'll definitely win. Meanwhile, a two-tailed civet cat, which is a level 2 star beast, enters the arena, and Zhang, after seeing it, says Zio really doesn't want to live, but Ying says she believes in Zio. 
Suddenly, Zio slams the civet cat on the floor from its tail, and Ying gladly tells her father that Zio has won, but Zheng says the two-tailed cat must have been locked up for too long, so its fighting power has decreased greatly. A few minutes later, the next beast, a three-eyed cow, entered the arena, and Zheng wondered why Zio was not stopping when he was already at his limit. Zheng thinks it's hard for Zio to have a bright future, because he knows the impact of this cow running at full speed can knock a steel chariot into the air. However, Ying tells her dad that he said Zio Ming would lose, but in the end, Zio will win. Zheng tells Ying not to worry because he thinks he won't be wrong the second time. Suddenly, when Zio punches down the cow, Ying celebrates Zio's win, but Zheng is shocked that Zio defeated the three-eyed demon with a single punch. When Ying asks what her father has to say now, Zheng feels embarrassed, but suddenly, he sees the sixth-rank star Beast Iron, armed Godzilla, in the arena. Zheng shockedly wondered what the arena was up to and why they sent such a strong beast. Ying also gets worried about seeing the beast and asks if her dad can save him, but her father says even veteran martial artists would not dare to prove this beast. Ying, with tears in her eyes, says Zio just became a martial artist and it's difficult for him to win, so her father says he'll try to help Zio. Zheng thinks Zio Ming saved Ying before, he is not as trash as the rumors say, and he has high talent, so he thinks he can make Zio owe him a favor. Eventually, Zheng orders a worker there to inform Theon and ask if they can stop the duel because Zio is his junior. The worker tells Zheng to wait a moment, and when the request goes to Theon's secretary, she tells Theon that Zheng wants them to stop the duel because that person is Zheng's junior. Theon, with surprise, asks if Zhang came and dared to try something funny at his Star Eclipse arena. Theon says it seems like the Berserk Hyena case didn't make him learn his lesson. Theon orders his secretary to go to the 13th floor's beast prison, bring out the frog, and reject Zhang's request. Theon orders the secretary to bring his words to Zhang, so she goes and, after apologizing, tells him that Star Eclipse arena rules are that if a beast enters the arena, it's not convenient to stop the duel. The secretary says there are so many audience watching, and if they know Zheng interfered, then it won't be good. Zheng tells Ying that he cannot help, and she gets worried, so Zheng says that Zio can only rely on himself. Simultaneously, the secretary gets close to Zheng, while saying Lord Theon told her to bring his words to Zheng, and says if Zheng doesn't agree to the second master's request soon, it won't be just berserk hyena anymore. Zhang is shocked to hear this, but he thinks it was expected that Ying's case was done by the second master of the Star Eclipse Arena, Edward, and Zhang furiously thinks he'll make Edward pay for this. When Ying asks her dad what has happened, he replies he is fine but a little tired, so they should go back after this round. Zhang thinks he needs to provide more protection to Ying because he can't let her get injured anymore. Meanwhile, Cade is going all out and bets 100,000 silver on human gladiators winning, but his men try to calm him down because they think Zio is no match for an armed gorilla. Still, Cade thinks the higher the risk, the higher the return and says if they win, they'll be rich, but if they lose, they'll suffer, so it all depends on time. Meanwhile, the other people watching Cade bet think Cade has gone crazy because he is betting on a kid to win. Suddenly, the gorilla starts to attack Zio, but Zio continues to block and dodge its attacks. Zio gets a few scratches and thinks if he doesn't use his skill, the iron-armed gorilla will be hard to deal with. Zio thinks after he has become a martial artist, he will not use his skill at all, so he takes out his sword and decides to test it on the gorilla. Simultaneously, the audience is glad to see that Zio has a weapon, but they think it's too late. The audience thinks if Zio has a weapon from the start, he still won't be a match for the iron-armed gorilla. The people think Zio should have left after winning a few rounds, but now that he has provoked the Star Eclipse Guild, he has to suffer. Meanwhile, Zhang tells Ying that she doesn't have to watch, but Ying says she doesn't believe it, so she'll go and save Zio, but her father grabs her arm and says it's enough. Suddenly, the gorilla tries to attack Zio, but Zio also gets ready to attack him, while the people chant that the gorilla should kill Zio. Meanwhile, Cade wants Zio to win because he has bet all his money on him, and Zhang closes Ying's eyes so she can't see. Suddenly, Zio uses a lightning sword slash and kills the gorilla, which shocks everyone in the audience, and they think this guy must be an expert acting weak to flex. Suddenly, Zhang was shocked to see Zio's instant kill move, and he wondered how this was possible. 
Ying is happy to see Xiao is fine, but she asks her father how the iron-armed gorilla died and asks if anyone helped him. When Zhang says no one helped Xiao and he killed the gorilla on his own, Ying gets shocked. Meanwhile, Xiao absorbs the gorilla's Kai blood, which increases his blood points to 233, and Xiao is happy to receive these points. Suddenly, Xiao sees Cade screaming with joy that they have made a fortune, but Xiao feels embarrassed because so many people are watching them. Cade goes to the announcement desk, and when they say he is the only one who won the bet, Cade proudly shows off their win because others don't believe Xiao could win. Meanwhile, Xiao thinks he made a lot of money this time, so he can improve his family's life, and Xiao Yu also doesn't have to work hard. Suddenly, Ying comes running towards Xiao, and he surprisingly asks what she is doing there, to which she replies she watched his fight up there, and that he is amazing. Xiao thanks her, but she stays quiet after that, and Xiao wonders why she is not saying anything. Suddenly, Zhen calls Ying because they have to go, and Ying, before leaving, tells him that her birthday is on the 5th of the next month, so she would like to invite him to her birthday. Xiao replies if he has nothing important, he'll come, and Ying gladly leaves, saying that they'll have a deal while Xiao wonders if this little girl is in love with him. As Ying is leaving, suddenly, a frog appears in front of her, and she wonders where the frog came from. Ying thinks it's pretty cute, but as Xiao notices the frog, he gets startled and immediately pulls Ying back. Simultaneously, the frog opens its mouth, and they both disappear in the air along with the frog. Zheng screams Ying's name worryingly, and when Cade brings the money to show Xiao, he also wonders where Xiao is because he was there a minute ago. Meanwhile, an announcement is made that the ranked beast, a traveling frog, has escaped from the underground dungeon, and this beast can teleport randomly for a thousand miles. According to the announcement, this frog has an 80% chance of traveling outside the city and is extremely dangerous, so they tell the people to evacuate the arena. On the other hand, the frog teleports with Xiao and Ying to a forest, and Xiao immediately captures the frog after teleporting it there. Xiao furiously asks the frog where it teleports them to, but suddenly, they hear some howls, and as they look back, they see a herd of soldier-ranked fey wolf. Xiao knows they are in trouble because these beasts move in groups, and he has a defenseless companion, which is a bad situation. Xiao picks up some stones and tells Ying to run on the count of three because when he starts to fight, he might not be able to look after her. When Ying doesn't reply, Xiao looks back and sees she is sitting on the ground, which makes him furious, so he asks what she is doing. Xiao asks if she can hear him, but she doesn't reply, and as the wolves are about to attack, Xiao says it's too late and he can only fight head on. Xiao immediately beats down those wolves and thinks it's strange howling moon wolves are not aggressive at all. Suddenly, when Ying shockingly looks at Xiao, he tells her that it's nothing, and he just defeated a few howling moon wolves that wanted to attack them. Xiao tells her not to be shocked because it's not a big deal, but Ying tells Xiao that he got it wrong because the howling moon wolves' target was not them, but the little howling moon wolves' cubs. Xiao is shocked to see the cubs, and Ying says she happened to read the research materials on howling moon wolves in the school before and learned about their habits. Ying, while leaving the cubs near the wolves, says the place they are teleported to happens to be the lair of the howling moon wolves. Ying says the wolves probably regarded them as intruders, so they were eager to protect the cubs, and they just needed to return the wolf cubs back to them. Meanwhile, Xiao still thinks the beasts are beasts, and they are forever human enemies. Xiao thinks now that these wolves aren't on guard. If he attacks now, he can kill all of them because, to humans, dead beasts are the best. Suddenly, Ying tells Xiao to look at the wolf cub, which is extremely cute, and asks him to try to hug it, but Xiao gets nervous because he doesn't want to hold the cub. Still, Ying forcefully passes the cub to Xiao, and when he looks at it, Xiao thinks it really looks cute, which makes him happy. Xiao realizes these beasts have emotions of their own and even have family values, which are hardly different from humans, so he wonders if they really have to kill them. Suddenly, a wolf looks at them and makes a sound, which Ying explains Xiao is a gesture of goodwill from the wolf as they return their baby. Xiao thanks the wolf but wonders if this beast has a great heart of attitude and if they evolved so much in 300 years. Suddenly, Xiao notices a man there with a gun, and he tells Ying to watch out, but suddenly that man shoots the wolf and it dies on the spot. Ying feels bad and tries to touch the wolf, but Xiao pushes her down with him to protect him from a shootout. 
a group of hunters is shooting at the wolves, and their leader tells them to watch out and not hurt the cubs. One of them tells their leader not to worry because these cubs are worth a lot of money, and he would not want to hurt them. Two wolves try to attack those hunters, but they shoot them down, and one of the hunters says how dare these mere beasts be arrogant. Meanwhile Ying, hiding behind the bushes with Zio, wonders what is going on, and when she sees all the wolves are dead, she gets worried. The hunters are happy because this time, loot is not bad, and one of them says he originally planned to go back because he never thought there would be any unexpected gain. They decide to peel off the skin of adult wolves, bring the wolf cubs back, sell them at the Colosseum, and split the money afterward. Ying gets mad and wants to fight with those guys, but Zio tells her to calm down. Ying asks if Zio didn't see what they just did, to which he replies he saw, but humans and beasts are sworn enemies, so they did nothing wrong. Ying emotionally says that the group of howling moon wolves was very friendly towards them, but Zio tells her that those are still beasts and they are humans. Zio tells Ying that they should go because these people should be the hunting team of the Sky Sea City. Zio says they'll follow them to go back and thinks 300 years ago, beasts attacked them fiercely and only after humans united could they resist it. Zio thinks that compared to beasts, humans will forever be more important. Meanwhile, the hunter's leader says he seems to have seen two humans and asks his men where did they go. Another hunter tells his boss that they are behind him. So when the boss turns, Zio tells them that they are from the Martial Academy but got teleported there because of an accident and hopes they bring them back to the city. Suddenly, the boss says he cannot let them go because in the wild, the Martial Arts Academy students are food tickets. The boss orders his men to capture them alive, and they start to walk toward them while saying the girl is quite cute. Ying worryingly asks what they are trying to do, and Zio warns them it would be best if they don't try something stupid. Meanwhile, Zio says that when humans become enemies, he'll annihilate them. So when a hunter tries to hit Zio while calling him a mere kid, Zio grabs that hunter's gun and says some humans are more disgusting than beasts. The hunter is shocked by Zio's strength, and Zio, with a fierce punch, throws him away. Zio says he feels comfortable and asks the other hunters what they are waiting for, which makes them furious, and they start shooting at Zio. The hunters say Zio is courting death, but Zio says they are too slow, and using the martial arts thunderbolt technique, he dodges the bullets and punches down all the hunters, leaving their boss. The boss is shocked to see this, and Zio asks him why has the Konghai City Beast's hunting team attacked the martial arts academy students. The boss asks how dare Zio ask him this question and tries to punch Zio with a fiery fist, but Zio grabs it with a single hand while saying it's a violation of Article 28 of Chapter 15 of the Federation Regulation. Zio says he can push the boss by shooting him on the spot and twisting the boss's arm. The boss of the hunter tries to scare Zio by telling him about their commander, but Zio kicks his face and says that the commander behind them is useless. Zio continues beating the hunter's boss while saying they attacked him, so they must die, and when that hunter says their commander will not spare Zio, Zio pushes down the hunter's face on the ground with his foot and says let their commander come. Zio asks Ying if she is fine, to which she while grabbing the cubs replies she is fine, but she asks Zio if they can take the cubs with them. Ying says if the cubs stay there, they are dead, to which Zio agrees and says he'll go clean up the loot because the hunting party should have a lot of supplies, enough to last them for a while. Zio finds some blood crystals in the hunter's pockets, and when Ying asks him what these are, Zio tells her that blood crystals are crystals that are formed when the blood energy is concentrated to a certain level. Zio says the martial artists can increase their blood points after absorbing it. Zio doesn't expect to find such valuable items, so he realizes this beast hunting team is not simple, but he thinks it's a good opportunity for him. Zio collects the crystals and tells Ying that they should go because the smell of blood might attract other beasts there. On the other hand, the other team of hunters tells their commander that the signal shows the third team is near there. Suddenly, the commander sees the dead bodies of the third team there and tells his men to search the bodies immediately for the blood crystals. Meanwhile, Kiwi asks Commander Yu, who is his uncle, when they are going to catch the starling deer. Kiwi says next month is Ying's birthday so he plans to give her a deer as a birthday gift. Suddenly, when Kiwi looks at the dead bodies, he is shocked that there are so many dead. 
Meanwhile, the hunters tell the commander that there are no blood crystals, which infuriates the commander, and he tells young Master Kiwi that his starling deer has to wait because a thief stole the master's things, which you has to find first. On the other hand, Zio and Ying, while walking around, see so many empty buildings there, and Ying says these are even taller buildings than the city of Cucade. Zio says this is the old-time commercial center, and it used to be very prosperous, where many people came and went every day. Zayo says at that time, there were no beasts, and Ying says it seemed to be the heart of the forest, so she asks if they want to get out and shouldn't go outside. Zayo says they are completely unfamiliar with the forest, so they might be in danger if they walk carelessly. Zayo tells Ying that they need to find a map from the old era and then make a plan. Ying says first, they need to find a campsite and settle the little wolves down, but suddenly, they hear the sound of a beast. Ying worriedly asks what they should do. But Zio says they should go and check it out because they'll probably have to spend the night there, so it's best to explore the surroundings. When they search around, they see a soldier-level beast, Earth Lizard, and a girl named Rona is also present there. When Zio says the Earth Lizard is targeting the little girl, Ying says they need to go and save her. Suddenly, when Zio tells Ying to go ahead while he stays there and cheers her, Ying gets scared and says she doesn't think she can save the little girl on her own. Zio tells Ying that this is the wilderness, not the sea city, so useless kindness will only get them killed. Ying is worried, but Zio tells her not to worry because the little girl doesn't need their help. Suddenly, Rona jumps in the air using her spear and shoots arrows into the lizard's eyes. Rona immediately takes out a dagger and kills the earth lizard with a strong stab. After killing the lizard, Rona says it's such a big creature that it's enough to eat for several days. Meanwhile, Ying says this little girl is amazing, and Zio thinks such fierce skills can only be honed through countless life and death battles. Suddenly, Rona throws an arrow near the place where Zio and Ying are hiding, which scares Ying because they are spotted. Rona, while aiming towards them, asks who is over there and tells them to come out quickly. Zio is amazed by Rona's perception and thinks this little girl is extraordinary. Suddenly, Ying tells Zio to let her handle the negotiation because they are girls and it would be good to communicate and not provoke hostility. Ying gives the cubs to Zio and steps forward, thinking that until now Zio has always protected her, so it's time for her to contribute. Ying thinks with her appearance and extremely affable smile, winning the favor of a little girl is a piece of cake. When Ying tells Rona not to be nervous because they are not beasts and are people from the nearby Sky Sea City, Rona gets attentive to hear the name of Sky Sea City. Rona immediately aims at Ying, calling her dangerous, but Ying gets nervous and says they are all humans, so she asks why Rona is afraid of her, but Rona yells at Ying to stop talking nonsense. Suddenly, Zio arrives there and tells Ying not to waste her energy because this little girl should be from the abandoned clan. When Ying asks what an abandoned clan is, Zio says 300 years ago, during the initial stages of the invasion by the beasts, humans were continuously retreating. In order to preserve the remaining strength, humans formed a federation. Zio says they established 130 federation cities and relocated all the remaining humans into them. However, for various reasons, some didn't enter the federation cities in time, and they believed they had been abandoned so they resented the Federation people and called themselves the Abandoned Clan. Zio says these people stick together for warmth in the wild, struggling to survive under the threat of beasts. Ying says that the beast threat is not as great anymore, and the Federation has the ability to rescue them, so she asks why they still neglect them. Zio replies the Federation only has 100 cities and no extra space for newcomers. Besides, those people have become accustomed to living in the wilderness. Ying gets emotional that they are truly pitiful, but suddenly Rona shoots an arrow near her feet and tells her to leave immediately because the lizard beast is hers. Zio thinks these abandoned clan people live nearby, and they must know the way out, so he thinks if they establish a good relationship, it'll be helpful. Zio tells Rona not to misunderstand because they have no interest in the beast and says as the blood of the lizard beast is splattered on her face, it's really toxic. Zio says she has been poisoned, but Rona doesn't believe him because her mom says outside people are all liars, and she shoots at Zio. Zio dodges all her arrows and asks if she thinks she can harm him with these arrows, to which she replies he is celebrating too early. Suddenly, Rona summons entangling vines from the ground, which grabs Zio's legs, making him wonder what these are. 
Meanwhile, Ying tells Zio to be careful, but Rona instantly jumps at Zio with a dagger while saying she is Rona from the Green Vine tribe. Zio says she collapses and immediately falls to the ground due to the poison in her body. Zio says that he tells her she is poisoned, but she doesn't believe him. When Ying asks what is wrong with this little girl, Zio checks Rona and says she is poisoned by the Earth Lizard Beast, but it is not a big deal. Zio says he'll help her detoxify and thinks it's impressive that Rona can control wooden elements at such a young age, which he thinks is a natural talent. When Ying asks where they can find the antidote in the wilderness, Zio replies all things have their opponents. Zio takes Rona's dagger and says the earth lizard beast's blood is poisonous to others but harmless to itself because it has the corresponding detoxifying organ in its body. Ying surprisingly tells Zio that he is quite knowledgeable because she never come across this information in books. Zio says it's some trivial experience, and as he takes that organ out, he says it is a detox gland inside the earth lizard beast's body. Zio says now they need to find some purple wind flowers and dogtail grass to neutralize its properties. Suddenly, Ying says she thinks they cannot give these ingredients directly to the girl to consume because she has studied potion making. As Zio starts using the fire chain molecular reaction on those herbs, Ying gets shocked, and Zio immediately creates an antidote. When Zio asks what Ying just said, Ying embarrassingly says it's nothing. When she asks where Zio learned potion making because his potion making skills are too proficient, he replies he has a few books on potion making at home, and he learned from them. While Ying thinks it's a casual excuse that he learned from books, Zio gives the potion to Rona. After some time, Rona opened her eyes, and when Zio and Ying asked if she was okay, Rona was startled to see them close to her. Suddenly, Rona faints in shock, and Ying asks why she faints again, but when Zio says if she faints again, he'll take the earth lizard away, she immediately gets up and bites Zio. Rona says the earth lizard is hers, and they should not think about taking it. Zio says he'll not take the lizard, but she should get off his arm quickly because it's him who cured her poison. Rona immediately leaves his arm and is shocked to realize she is feeling better now. Rona excitedly asks if Zio is the esteemed potion master, to which Zio says he is not exactly respected, but he can be considered a pharmacist. Ying tells Rona that they need no harm, and they just accidentally entered the twilight forest, so they wanted to ask how to get out. Rona says she can take them out without any problem, but Zio has to go back to her tribe with him. Rona thinks if he is a pharmacist, then her mom's illness can be cured, but Zio asks why he needs to go there. Rona is about to reply, but suddenly, the team of hunters arrives and surrounds them. Commander Yu says they won't be able to go anywhere and tells Zio to hand over the blood crystals, so he can give him a more comfortable way to die. Zio calls it rubbish and kicks the dead body of the earth lizard at them. The hunters start shooting the body, but Zio immediately gets on it to shoot arrows at the hunters. Zio knows there are people surrounding them, and by now Ying and Rona are probably captured, so he thinks he needs to leave at least one of these people alive. Zio shoots down three hunters with arrows and stabs another, but when the commander Yu tries to shoot him, Zio kicks him, making the gun fall from his hand, and Yu screams in pain. Zio captures Yu and tells the other hunters not to move, but they tell Zio to leave their commander. Zio tells the hunters to release his people first, but the hunters call it a joke because they have captured two persons while Zio has captured only one. Ying tells Zio not to worry about them, and Rona also tells Zio to kill this group of colonizers. Rona tells Zio not to worry about them, but Yu advises Zio to surrender obediently. Zio furiously kicks Yu in his knee and tells them to release the girls immediately. Otherwise, he'll break Yu's limbs. Yu asks how dare Zio insult him, so he orders his men to break both legs of the girls. As the hunters are about to hit Ying's legs, Zio puts a dagger on Yu's neck and says he'll die if Ying gets hurt. The hunter gets hesitant, but Yu tells them that Zio is just bluffing because he wouldn't risk the lives of these two women. Zio, with an intimidating tone, says they should try it then and says if he loses, these two women will lose their lives and he'll have the ability to leave unscathed. But Zio says if you loses, you will lose his own life, and says regardless of who wins or loses, he'll survive. Zio says if you dares to gamble, then he should play, but you says if they put down their guns when the time comes, Zio might go back on his own word, and you will end up dead at his hands. Zio gets furious that Yu is still bargaining and asks if the commander wants to die right now, 
which makes the commander order his men to put down their guns. The hunters are not sure about dropping the guns, but Commander Yu yells at them to put down their guns because he doesn't want to die. Suddenly, the ground starts trembling, and everyone wonders if this is an earthquake, but suddenly, an earth lizard beast comes out of the ground. The lizard is a 9-star elite level exotic beast, a fire lizard, which attacks everyone there with its tail. Ying is going to fall to the ground, but Zio immediately pushes the commander away and protects Zio from falling to the ground. Meanwhile, a huge rock was going to fall on them, but suddenly Rona ran and broke them into small pieces with a strong hit. Rona is going to fall, but Zio catches her and she feels a little weak. When Zio asks if she is fine, Rona immediately gets down and, pushing him away, says she is fine. Rona says she owes him her life, but now she has repaid it. Simultaneously, the hunters start shooting the fire lizard, but it's invulnerable. Zio says it is a nine-star beast, and a normal armor piercing round can't break its defense, so the hunters might only provoke the fire lizard further. Suddenly, the fire lizard burns the hunters with a fire blaze from its mouth, while Zio immediately grabs Ying and Rona and runs from there because they cannot handle this situation. The fire lizard also starts following Zio, and Zio worriedly wonders what is happening and why this creature is following them. Zio realizes he used the fire lizard beast's detox gland to remove the poison from Rona, so the scent of the lizard beast is strongest on her. Zio suspects that fire lizard must be the offspring of the one following them, so he continues running while holding Ying and Rona. Suddenly, Ying worryingly says there is a cliff ahead and there is no way out, so Zio stops on the edge and Rona asks what they should do now. When Zio says it's better to die than to all die together, both of them ask what he means. Zio immediately grabs Rona and throws her away in the woods while she thinks he is trying to sacrifice her. While falling, Rona thinks people inside the city are truly untrustworthy, and Ying also confusedly asks what Zio is doing. Zio has Rona's blood on his hand, and he, with a smile, asks what Ying is thinking. Zio says the detox gland in the fire lizard's blood has the strongest scent, so he applies the blood on his face and says the fire lizard's target is now him. Ying gets worried, but Zio immediately pushes her near Rona and tells Rona to take care of Ying for him. Zio, after saying he must live well, immediately jumps off the cliff, and the fire lizard also jumps after him. Ying screams Zio's name while crying, and Rona thinks she just saved Zio's life, but now she owes him again. Meanwhile, Zio, while falling down, thinks falling from such a heightened would leave him crippled, if not dead. Zio thinks he can only try using the life-saving skill of the blood kill technique from his previous life, but he hasn't used his current body to perform this before. Zio wonders if his body can withstand it, but he still uses the technique. He feels difficulty and thinks using the blood skill technique with this body is a bit challenging. Zio is scared because he is about to hit the floor, and he doesn't want to ruin his face, so he uses Leap's skill again. Suddenly, wings appeared from Zio's back, and he managed to land safely on the floor, but he wondered what was happening. Meanwhile, a notification appears that the system has activated the self-rescue once sensing the host's danger. This feature deducts half of the Kai blood points, and the remaining points are 102, which is shocking for Zio. Zio is surprised that the system has a self-rescue, but he thinks it's really expensive as it costs half of the blood points. Suddenly, Zio hears the fire lizard falling behind him, and in front of him, he sees the place that used to be an amusement park. Zio starts running towards the park, thinking he can't handle the lizard in his current state, so it's better to hide in the advanced forest. Meanwhile, he gets a notification for a special mission that the reward for killing the lizard is 300 Kai blood points. This is the first time the system has offered a reward mission to Zio, but he decides to pass it this time because it is too dangerous. While running in the jungle Zio thinks he'll kill a few more small monsters in the future to replenish his Kai blood, but for now, survival is a priority. Suddenly, Zio gets a notification that if he doesn't accept the mission within three minutes, it'll be considered cowardly behavior and all the remaining Kai blood points will be deducted after automatic mission abandonment. Zio gets shocked and he stops running, but he gets furious because zeroing out the blood Kai means death. Zio wanted to keep a low profile, but now he thinks if he has to kill the fire lizard beyond his level, there is only. Meanwhile, the lizard continues following him, and Zio thinks he has to seize the opportunity and strike its weak point for a fatal blow. 
Otherwise, being at a disadvantage in both attack and defense, he knows he'll be throwing his life away. Zio uses Leap Sky Art to cross the river there and uses five blood crystals, but when the fire lizard comes after him, it falls into the river, and Zio tells it to take a good bath and calm down. After some while, when the lizard comes out of the river Zio, while looking at it, thinks the fire lizard's body is extremely tough, so he thinks that inserting a rod into its nostrils and reaching the brain can cause a fatal injury inflicted. Zio, while standing on the ferris wheel with a rod in their hand, thinks he has only one chance to hit, so when the lizard opens its mouth to emit fire, Zio jumps at the lizard and inserts the rod in the lizard's nostril. The lizard starts moving with pain, and Zio gets worried it's not dead, so he wonders if his physical strength is not strong enough because stabbing was not enough. Zio immediately absorbs more blood essence and stabs with full force into the lizard's nostrils, but the lizard hits its head in a rock there, due to which Zio gets smashed between the rock and its head. Still, the stab was strong enough that it killed the lizard, and it disappeared in the air while its blood essence, which is 300 points, was absorbed in Zio's body. Zio feels a sharp pain in his chest, and he gets a notification that the acquired blood essence exceeds the capacity limit, so the remaining blood essence can't be absorbed. The notification says the blood essence has reached the first tier bottleneck, which is 500. Zio is shocked that just 500 blood essences are already the limit of his body, and he thinks he still has many things to do, so he must not die there. Suddenly, Zio gets a notification that his body can no longer withstand more blood essence so if he wants to undergo body modification. Zio accepts body modification, so a notification bar appears telling him to mark an enemy and after killing it, obtain its flesh to strengthen his own body. The system tells Zio to increase the limit of blood essence and the stronger the enemy, the greater the limit increase. Zio wonders if it is really this easy to become stronger by killing the monsters. However, he realizes if he wants to quickly improve his strength, he has to choose powerful enemies. Suddenly, the system notifies that it will be considered a mission failure if the kill and marking can't be completed within 24 hours, and then the host will die. Zio gets worried that the punishment for failure is death, so he realizes he needs to plan carefully. The pain in Zio's chest was too uncomfortable, so he decided to try using blood essence to activate the body's acupoints and relieve it. On the other hand, a team of military officers captures some guys, and when one of the guys asks who gave the hunters the right to capture them, the soldier asks what those guys are sneaking around the military base for. Meanwhile, an officer arrives and, in a mocking tone, asks the soldier why he is scaring those guys. The officer tells the soldier to put his gun down and tells the captured guys that as long as they are not spies, they'll let them go. The boy replies that they are not spies and they just came nearby to hunt. The officer by T says he believes they are not spies, but according to the rules, they have to bring these boys in for questioning. By T says that'll be a hassle all day, so he offers a deal that if these boys help him, he'll vouch for them and make the army release them. When Bai T asks one of the boys what he thinks about it, the boy agrees to help and asks what Bai T wants them to do. Bai T says they have a mine there, and they are short-handed so they can help by collecting some ore, but when those boys ask what about their tied hands, Bai T orders the soldier to untie the boys. Meanwhile, a man and his daughter see the hunter boys from the village are captured, so he tells his daughter to go back and get help quickly. On the other hand, Zio kills a small beast, but he has broken the iron rod, so he thinks he needs to find a weapon first. Zio, while walking around the jungle, wonders where he can find powerful enough exotic beasts to complete the mission. Suddenly, he gets a notification that he can get the navigation system for 10 blood essence points if he is struggling with directions. Zio accepts the navigation help, and suddenly, a chick falls on his head, which tells Zio that there is a suitable strong enemy ahead. The chick tells Zio to follow its directions and move forward, but Zio wonders if this system is a little yellow chicken. On the contrary, the boys enter the cave, and Bai T throws two bags near the boys, which they need to fill. One of the boys says if this is so easy, then why don't the soldiers come down and do it themselves? Meanwhile, another boy asks his fellows if they have not smelled blood and says this cave might not be that simple. As the boys start heading forward in the cave, the soldiers outside tell Bai T that he is amazing because he coaxed these guys to go down with just a few words. 
Meanwhile, the boy in the cave feels something is off, and suddenly, a beast grabs the boy's leg, tears it, and pulls it into the dark. The boys get terrified, and while they wonder what is happening, suddenly, the creature in the cave attacks these boys. When one of them asks Swear what they should do, Swear tells them to protect him while he finds the stones, and after filling the bags, they can leave. One of them says this place is pitch black, so how can they even find stones there? He realizes the soldiers purposely made them come down to feed the beasts in the cave. On the other hand, Zio has searched for a day, but he has not found any enemy yet, and when he, while standing on a tree, sees some barracks nearby, Zio tells the chick that it's not reliable. Chick yells at Zio not to call him a chick, so Zio asks what it is then. Suddenly, a notification appears that the target has been detected underground in a cave 500 meters away. When the navigation is complete, Zio tells the chick to at least tell him where the exact location is, but the chick disappears. Zio thinks 500 meters means the target is in the barracks, but he wonders if a strong beast could be raised in the barracks. Meanwhile, the boys inside the cave are severely injured, and in the dark, they cannot even kill the monster, so they decide to retreat. Suddenly, the monster attacks the boys and starts eating them. Meanwhile, Zio, looking towards the soldiers, realizes they are using humans to feed the monster. The soldiers are laughing, hearing the screaming sounds, and they realize some of the boys are dead. The soldiers wonder how long these boys are going to last, but when one soldier asks Bai T why they keep catching people to feed the monster in there, Bai T asks that soldier if he knows about the alchemist guild. The soldier says he knows that the guild collects materials to make all sorts of positions. Bai T says that kind of thing can be done by a potion master, but the alchemist guild is not so simple. They are a team that belongs to the alchemist guild, doing business that can make a lot of money, and what earns them the most money is the blood crystals. The soldiers ask if blood crystals are the rare material that high rank beasts occasionally drop, and they ask if they can be refined. Bai T says blood crystals are hard to get with him, so they are precious, but their guild alchemist, Lord Raven, researched and obtained a method to refine blood crystals, and the most important material is human flesh. When the soldiers happily ask if they were able to refine many blood crystals, Bai T says it is not that simple. Suddenly, an arrow hits a soldier, making him fall into the cave, and Bai T warns others that it's an ambush, so they should crawl down. Meanwhile, a few more soldiers get hit by the arrows, and the other soldiers start shooting from where the arrows are coming, but the man who sent his daughter to call for help dodges the bullets and continues shooting the soldiers. Simultaneously, Zio watching his thinks this man's shooting skill is not bad, but if he wants to defeat an entire army, he is not strong enough. Bai T tells the soldiers to continue shooting because the enemy is alone, but suddenly, a storm of arrows starts falling on them and kills so many soldiers. Bai T starts crawling to save his life because the enemy's help has arrived and Zio is shocked to see Rona among the attackers. Zio wondered if Rona was from the same race and suddenly he wondered where Ying was. Simultaneously, the villagers charge and start killing all the soldiers there, but suddenly Bai T operating a robot weapon appears there. While the villagers wonder what it is, Bai T yells that he'll kill them all and start shooting the villagers. Rona uses Vine Bond to grab the robot's legs, and the villagers start shooting arrows, but they realize it is not working. Bai T laughs at them, saying that they still want to use arrows to fight against Mecha, and he frees Mecha from the Vine Binds while saying it's time to show them his power. Bai T starts killing the villagers by shooting them down, and Rona gets worried, so she decides to kill Bai T herself, but suddenly Zio arrives there and tells her to let him do this. Zio takes her spear, and when he moves forward, Bai T sees him and starts shooting at him while saying who dare he fight him. Zio, dodging all the attacks, rushes towards Bai T, making him wonder if Zio is a martial artist because he is so fast. Meanwhile, the man who called help earlier wonders where this guy has come from and is thankful to Zio because it's the best chance for them to win. The man shoots an arrow at the robot using the wind element, which breaks the glass protecting Bai T. Bai T gets shocked that it shattered the protective glass and furiously says he'll kill them soon. Suddenly, Zio uses the leap technique, jumps on the robot, and stabs Bai T, breaking through the glass, which kills Bai on the spot. The villagers praise Zio for doing it nicely and are glad that they won. Rona tells Zio he is amazing and says when she saw him jump off the cliff, she thought she would never get to see him again. 
Rona tells her dad about Zio and that he saved her from the fire lizard, so Rona's father thanks him and says their race owes Zio a favor. Rona's father says Zio helped them twice and he doesn't know how to thank him, so he says if Zio needs help from them, he should just ask. Zio says it's nothing and they should not worry about it, but he asks if they know where the underground cave is in that camp. Rona's father points towards the cave and says they came here for it because their people are captured and locked up below. When Zio checks the hole, he says it seems it is used to feed the beasts and it'll be dangerous below, so he says he should go down instead of everyone. Rona's father stops Zio, saying it's their matter and they cannot let him take this risk for them again, but Zio asks if they have experience when it comes to fighting with beasts in the dark. The villagers get confused, and Rona's father says the ferocious beast is very ruthless and strong and doesn't mention it in the dark. Even if it is in the day, they have to be careful when facing it, so they usually don't fight with beasts in the dark. Zio says the tunnel is dim and narrow, which is not conducive to fighting with many people, and the beasts below won't be simple, so he tells them to let him do this. Rona's father is worried, but Zio tells him not to worry and says he needs to borrow his sword. As Zio jumps down, he thinks it's been a long time since he held a sword, and it reminds him of when he was in the Holy Sword Temple. Zio, Lai Wang, and Long Huan swore in that temple to die for each other, but they betrayed him. Suddenly, the beast tries to bite Zio from behind, but Zio cuts it down while thinking he cannot let go of those two guys and he needs to get stronger. Zio sees it's a sandworm, which is not considered a powerful beast, so he wonders why the system asks him to go there. Zio wonders if it could be that the powerful alien beast is still deep in the cave, so he starts walking forward in the cave while killing the sandworms. Zio thinks the sandworms there are not only numerous but also unusually large, and those who enter the cave may be in dire straits. Suddenly, Zio sees someone under a sandworm and tells the guy to hold on while he tries to take him out for treatment right away. Zio tells that guy that his people are there to save him, and they are at the door, so he'll send him out immediately. The guy points at an iron door there and tells Zio to tell his race to take revenge for them, and after saying this, the boy dies of his wounds. Zio furiously gets up and knocks at the door, but the guy on the other side asks Zio to give the entry code. Zio tells the guy to die, but the guy says Zio came to seek death, and he dares to act arrogant when he is about to be eaten by the sandworm. Zio furiously starts kicking the door and the soldier on the other side asks if Zio thinks he can destroy this thick iron door. Suddenly, Zio breaks the door with such force that the soldier gets smashed under it. Meanwhile, Zio gets a notification that a suitable target is ahead of him, and Zio realizes the target beast is inside, so he starts looking ahead and sees they are nurturing sandworms there. Zio can't feel any beast's aura there, but suddenly, a masked guy appears behind him and says he said before not to disturb him when he is doing experiments. The guy stabs Zio's arm and asks why they don't listen, but Zio immediately moves away from the guy, thinking he didn't sense his presence at all, which means this guy is not simple. Suddenly, the wound disappears like an illusion, and Zio thinks it's strange. Meanwhile, the system notifies Zio that this guy, Raven, is the target, and he is a rank 2 martial artist and alchemist with 1000 Kai blood values. Zio is shocked that the mission target is human, not a high rank beast. Raven says Zio is not his underling, so he asks how he got there, to which Zio replies that he walked in there using his legs. Raven gets furious to know Zio killed all his babies, and he starts whining for his precious blood crystals. Raven asks if Zio knows how many humans he fed them to make them grow so big and whine it's a waste. Meanwhile, Zio thinks even though this person is crazy, he is extremely strong and the strange thing is why he feels a beast aura from Raven's body. Zio wonders if Raven is really the target of this mission. Suddenly, Raven says he doesn't like pure slaughter because it is a waste of resources, but Zio has made him angry. Raven says not only did Zio waste the fruit of labor so many people, but he also wasted his effort. Suddenly, Raven uses Dark Knight Star territory, and Zio gets nervous to see it's a territory skill that is able to rob the vision completely. Zio thinks the most troublesome thing when facing martial arts is the fact that he has to deal with their skills. Raven tries to stab Zio from behind, but Zio immediately attacks back. Raven escapes into the air, and Zio realizes Raven has removed his own aura and sound in his dark territory. Raven again stabs Zio in the back and says after 12 stabs, Zio will die. 
Meanwhile, Zio thinks this dagger's shadow is strange, and he cannot get hit by it anymore. Zio is annoyed by this territory, so he decides to calm down first. The system also reminds him that after he marks the target, it'll be locked within his vision. The system also tells Zio that after marking, if he is unable to kill the target within 24 hours, he'll die because of mission failure. Suddenly, Raven again attacks Zio and manages to stab his chest, which makes Zio furious, and he decides to treat Raven as a beast to kill him. Zio decides either he'll die or Raven will die, so he marks Raven's back, making Raven wonder what just happened and why he feels bad. Raven tries to attack Zio from behind while saying he'll slice him up and feed him to his babies, but Zio avoids the attack and stabs Raven, which destroys his territory. Raven is shocked at how Zio knows where he is, to which Zio replies that a coward who hides in the dark only dares to sneakily attack from behind. Zio says he has encountered many people like Raven before, and Raven says it's interesting that a rank 1 martial artist acts so arrogant and doesn't feel fear while facing him. Raven says Zio is a valuable material, and after thinking for a second, he says Zio will kneel down, bow three times, and beg him to be his master so that he'll not kill him. Raven says he'll give Zio a chance to become rich with him. But when he asks what Zio thinks, Zio asks how Raven kneels down and bows 30 times, and he'll give him a painless death. Raven starts to laugh, says it's interesting, and that he'll try his best not to kill Zio quickly. Raven says it's better if Zio struggles hard and tells him to bring it on because he wants to see how fresh Zio's meeting is. Raven tries to stab Zio, but he dodges it, and they both start sparring, which makes Raven feel that Zio's sword technique is brilliant and his strength and speed are as good as his. Raven feels Zio is like a veteran who has fought many fights because he is able to predict all of Raven's attacks, and he wonders if these are the skills that a rank 1 martial artist should have. Suddenly, Zio sees an opening and stabs Raven's face, due to which his mask tears and his half-face becomes visible. Raven is shocked that Zio has actually started to keep up with his speed, and he feels a scary pressure from Zio's body. Raven wonders if Zio has special power, which is mental suppression, and Zio asks if he is scared. Raven is nervous that he'll lose to a rank 1 martial artist, and when he sees Zio approaching to stab him, Raven says it's not possible, and he throws an attack at Zio, which Zio destroys in the air. In the meantime, Raven attacks Zio twice from behind and says Zio's sword technique is not bad as he is able to fight him, but he is still too weak. Raven says there are 7 hits left, but Zio says this is enough time to kill him. Suddenly, Raven creates a strong blood armor around his body which seems strange to Zio, and when Zio tries to stab, he cannot cut through it. Zio gets worried to see that this armor not only has a high defense, but can even entangle his sword. Zio tries to pull back his sword, but Raven stabs his arm while Zio is thinking he needs a way to win this mission. 